up, down, up, down, up, Hey, down. guys. Oh, Nicole, also, next time, I want you to say the hey, guys. It's Ni- Hey, guys. Yes. It's Nickel Brick, the oh, darling love. homebody. Yes. And on the side of me. <laughs> Which side, though? Paint a picture, one of Nicole. Them. It's one of the sides. <laughs> but paint a picture. What's the room look it's like we're co-host. in? It's my co-host. James, oh, uh, I thought you were going to finish it. Oh, but paint a picture, Nicole. What's the room we're in? My co-host, Jam Beats. Yes, I'm a Jam Beats vibes. Uh, And hey, if you're under the age of 12, uh, maybe go back to school instead of watching this video. Because Uh, we gonna get raunchy as hell talking about dirty feet. Feeding. About uh, penises. Oh, man. And if you're yeah. a boy who's like, I know about penises. I have one. Well, guess what? Yours might be circumcised. And all other peoples who aren't, you don't even know about that yet. But if you're uncircumcised, you might not even know about circumcised ding-dongs. But don't circumcise my ding-dongs. The food treat. Because then the... the, the Sweet cream's pouring out everywhere. There's no casing. Yeah. Do you wish I were uncircumcised? Let's get into the story. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I've Uh, arrived at him. Oh, wait. No, it's you. Why do you keep... Why? Uh, Because I want to kiss you. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way i'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard but hopefully no one will notice i check my watch and i'm relieved to see that i'm only two minutes late wait was it room 103 or 108 i I spot a youth standing at his (laughs) locker this is you nicole and approach him for help Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vegas's classroom is? Do I get to play a youth? Oh, oh fuck yeah. Oh, shit. The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavy lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Oh, you! You've done it again! (laughs) Okay, wise guy, are you going to help me or not? Uh, Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs, walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth... Sent me on a royal goose chase. Mm-hmm. That's what gooses say. I get back to where that low rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, what's his voice going to be, guys? First thing that pops into my head is. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? (laughs) Oh, fine, Mr. Vega. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hey, guys, real quick. If you're a parent and you've gone to a parent-teacher conference thing... Hit up the comment section. Tell us a story. What are your teachers like? What are your kids being told in school? Were your Let kids us know. shit? Or were your kids... The pit. The pit. <laughs> uh, you must be figash. <laughs> this period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm? Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. All right, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Schlesinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Ooh, ooh, I know. Yes, Colin? (laughs) Colin stands up and does a thing where he blows... 
into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Uh. James, do it. <laughs> the whole class erupts <laughs> in oh. laughter. All right, all right, everyone. Very funny, Colin. <laughs> For real. I had to <laughs> bust my chops. This is my favorite Please sit one. down. Hmm. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that... The bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. I, okay, I want to quickly say something. If he is 10 minutes late, but the class wasn't over yet, why should he have been 10 minutes earlier when the class would have been still going for 12 minutes? <laughs> oh, middle school. I was waiting for you. I was like, Nicole, middle schoolers, right? I thought this, I thought she was in high school. Don't you teach high schoolers? Oh, okay. Both, you know, Barnett Koch. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Coming in them cheeks. Wow. Please call me Hugo. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments, has and has she's been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Okay, I'm I'm moving into sexual, so I'm going to veer off from that. Uh, we just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Ah. She... Mm. Good for me, Nicole. See, you can talk to her about... Oh, see if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and appreciates your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road... I know how important art school is for her. And I hate... <laughs> I, I'm also turning into, like, a sexy celebutant. Sexy. Um... Uh, a sexual blatant. And I would hate to see her miss out on her scholarship money that she is clearly deserved. Why are you turning into like a valley girl? <laughs> I know, like a celebrity. And your tongue. voice has lowered a lot. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. People have layers, Nicole. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped thinking for a moment. I, I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Yes. They ever catch that ride? <laughs> <laughs> That's a James joke. Ellipses, yes. Oh! I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Hmm. I pull up to the carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? 
Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we go grab some diner? Sure thing. To the food court. Does that sound good to you? Sh oh, yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Well, you buy me things. <laughs> <laughs> I well buy you a thing. <laughs> Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay. Because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective. Because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Uh, have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? What? N never mind, Nirvana. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not tuning things in. Oh. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all. Tuning things in. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Yeah. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R's going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Mm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Huh. Uh, it's a... Uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Mm. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Mm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Huh? What? No. Dad. Ugh. <laughs> I can't believe you would. Dad. I mean, jeez. <laughs> Why would you? Ugh. <laughs> Gross! Oh <laughs> Nicole is just panically pushing the button to be like, go sorry, faster. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love Didn't you, you kiddo. mean that's going well? She leads him forward, <laughs> turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall, then. Uh, medicine is not always the best medicine. Dad tip number oh. 29. Sometimes it's orange Dad juice. Dad number two. What? <laughs> Don't forget to floss every day. What's that from? Uh, oh, life. Yes. Uh, we arrive at the mall, <laughs> a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Can you tell the orange juice story? Oh my god. Okay. My dad would be like, whenever someone was sick, he'd be like, just drink a whole gallon of orange juice in one day and you'll be good. Be good. <laughs> so then I like tried to do that and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna fucking barf. And yeah, then there's... James was like, of course you are. Because you just tried to drink a gallon of orange juice. Yeah, and there's so much sugar. Just eat an orange. It's such a, like, it's such a dad thing to do. Uh, okay, let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Hell yeah. 
Language. Messy. Fuck, Dad. Heck yeah. Better. We approach the food Sorry. court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. Where are you in mood for? <laughs> bread dipped sugar, bread and cheese on it, or do you just want me to inject some fat directly in your bloodstream? I extend my hand, sir. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. We have to eat the through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Uh, which meme? All, all memes. <sighs> Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all the youths have already done the joke to death. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on the meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be a long dead by that time it comes out. So just dates it and it isn't funny. Oh, shit. <laughs> this seems so out of character. Oh, shit. What up? <laughs> Dad, please. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment? I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s? Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time? Oh, that one. Yes. Amanda runs in... Sorry, I was just like looking at the Yeah, it looks store. cool. <laughs> Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is. You can still see the outline, kind of. I'm so proud. Speech. Amanda. Speech. 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 All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Cramby had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Huh. Amanda is moved. I'm moved. She begins clapping slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. 
that's to simulate the two people. Oh, hey, chain wallet. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in a dead goth and beyond. Peruse the band tees. Look at ironic mugs. Check, ooh, check the clearance, baby. There's a big cardboard box of marked down items. I'm pretty sure $4 for purple eyeliner is a good deal, I think. Is it, Nicole? Uh, no. I wonder if I would look good in purple eyeliner. You would, Nicole. Hell yes, I would. Uh, look, this is very important to me. I don't, I can't see the character. Oh, that's actually a pretty good one. Uh, I yes. overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can say, oh wait, I want, I can say, I guess this is my vampire voice. I, I mean, it's the cashier, so. Uh, he's a vampire. The cashier is? Yeah, look All at right. him. Oh wait, or is that not the cashier? May okay, I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. What? Oh, okay, this is the guy. Uh, listen, I when I uh, was oh, wait, a young I'm, I'm, ja I'm Jesse, uh, uh, Xander. Yes, that's what <sighs> I was trying to get. I'm Jesse Xander. Listen, when I, uh, this is a bit that we do on what the hell mouth Jesse in like the first episode of what the hell or of Buffy the Vampire Slayer when he gets teeth starts talking like this because he becomes a vampire. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian expired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwin dresses. <laughs> uh, do you want to, do you want to save the, the next do a next, next uh, yeah, time? Yeah, we'll figure out who this person's name is on next episode. Of Mostly, Mostly Play, Play and PlayStation. PlayStation. Check the description and also like, comment, subscribe. Please tell us your greatest opportunity in a store like Hot Topic. I'm Darling Homebody on all of the socials, meads, sias, uh, or the main ones. Uh, go to DarlingHomebody.com to see cool merch that I make uh, and patreon.com slash darlinghomebody. Hey guys, and if you want to listen to us be very, very goofy for an hour straight, listen to Mostly Speak and Sentai wherever podcasts are found or go to mlmpod.com to find out more information about that podcast, links to listen, and all the other podcasts that I do, such as Hit It and Crit It, This Movie's Gay, and What the Hell Mouth. That's all I'm plugging today. Beep, 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 beep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.